Kiwis, as you know, are gearing up for the Soccer World Cup in South Africa. But with the Hockey World Cup recently threatened by terrorists, what do you need to do to be prepared for the worst if you're travelling to an at-risk region? Well, joining us now is Tony Ridley, the Asia-Pacific Director of Security Services for International SOS. And Tony, you've been doing this for a very, very long time. Yes, seems like forever, but yeah, it's been quite a while now. Are your services being called on more and more at the moment? Absolutely. Whilst terrorism represents a small percentage of what we do, it's more about the routine, the basics, things that can avoid you ending up a casualty or statistic or catastrophic event. Mm. I just said, mentioned at-risk regions. Are there at-risk regions now? Yeah, absolutely. There's cities um, often vary. In large countries such as China and India, one city is not the same as another. So there are parts of the world where government response is not effective, emergency services are checkered, um, even corporate preparation is right. quite poor. Right. Having said that, though, anywhere in the world could be an at-risk region. Yeah, low risk doesn't mean no risk. Everywhere has its risk, whether it be high cholesterol, heart attacks, car accidents, <laughs> those kind of things. The more routine stuff can be equally as catastrophic. As well. Having said that, uh, if there's a large event anywhere, that is immediately going to become, a, I guess, a target for possible terrorist activity. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, these super events that are taking place almost create these mega cities overnight where everybody's converging on a single location. Mm -hmm. It brings some of the problems and it already amplifies some of the problems that may be there. So everyone needs to be aware of what was there before they arrived and what it brings when they come to these particular celebratory, celebratory or sporting events as mm. well. Obviously, uh, there was threats made to the Hockey World Cup and to the Commonwealth Games, which take place a little bit later this year. Uh, the Soccer World Cup, biggest sporting event in the, in the world, taking place in South Africa yep. uh, in June. What is your involvement with that? Well, we're providing support to uh, corporate members, which are in their business lives, but also people who are travelling on leisure, because we cover them both during their business activities as well as their uh, personal time. So what we're doing is providing advice and guidance and helping people understand somewhere halfway around the world. OK. So Joe Bloggs is heading over with a couple of mates to, to South Africa. What is your advice to him? Well, first of all, um, one of the things I need to consider is what time of the day and night are they arriving? You know, airports is often where the whole issue starts. You know, arrival at an airport, how much money do you change? Do you catch a cab? How do you commute to the city? How do you get to your hotel? Basic things that from the very beginning can determine how successful or how safe your overall trip's going so to be. So should you have all of that sort of thing planned beforehand? Absolutely. The, when going to these sorts of countries, and particularly some of the countries involved and even locations, you should script or plan as much in advance. There should be far less spontaneity. There should shouldn't be things left to chance. And the more you can plan in advance without over scripting it, um, the better you're going to be and certainly the safer you're going to be. It's probably not bad advice given that you're going to somewhere that is going to be overflowing with, um, with tourists at the time. What kind of hotel or where do you stay? Yep. Well, it, safe and secure hotels should be immediately obvious for even the most layman of individuals. That is, it should have clearly defined physical boundaries. It shouldn't be something where everybody can just wander to and fro. Um, it shouldn't be a place where, when you, upon arrival, there's all sorts of mixed entities. You know, there are people trying to sell you DVDs or people trying to um, sell you flowers, touting, all those kind of things. It should begin with what you see as a presence of controlled environment, the hotel, where only guests are allowed in, only people who have business at the hotel are allowed to come to and fro and that's where it begins and starts. Mm. Let's just have a look at this graphic quickly because this has got some of your main points and information is basically what you've just been talking about, the research. Um, habits, modify your habits according to the environment. Yeah, it, it's important for travellers, particularly anyone who's travelling long distance, to, to remember that what they do at home and how they do it at home is not how they should behave when they arrive somewhere. So they need to modify their habits based on the information, that is what they've understood, how things are, you know, things like seatbelts for example. If you wear seatbelts at home then you should be wearing seatbelts somewhere else you go. It shouldn't just accept that, well, this is kind of the way things are done here. Right. Um, and, and finally, response, making smart choices of situations change. How do you become that person who can be responsive like that? Well, despite the best of plans, there's always a variety of choices that will arrive, and it's about making smarter, informed choices rather than, you know, as I said, being rather cavalier or leaving it to chance and getting yourself into some degree of misadventure because you just didn't think things through. And does that count sort of being prepared in terms of, I guess, having your passport with you at all times? I mean, should you be carrying... What's the best thing? I always get confused when I'm staying somewhere. Am I best to put it in the hotel safe? Am I best to have it on me? Wear well, on me? Well, the best thing to do with hotels, uh, with, sorry, passports, is to secure them in a safe location. Leave them in the hotel. Have a photocopy. Have a scanned copy on your phone. Email yourself a copy of it. So you've got multiple copies, but the original document shouldn't be in your pocket where it can get wet, dirty or lost. It should stay in the hotel. It should be somewhere where it's secure. Carry a copy. You really don't need to have a copy of it on you at all times unless the local laws 
state that you should. should. Um, Tony, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'm sure you've got an interesting few months ahead of you. That is Tony Ridley from SOS. I met one of Tony's um, staff, Mark Jackson, who he was saying before is a bit of a legend in SOS. I met him in Kazakhstan. I had a bit of a headache and he got me some pills. <laughs> um, but here's a man who's travelled all over the world in real hot spots. Mm. Um, and, and basically saved people, evacuated people, you know, presided over some very, very dangerous situations. Um, I met him when I was going to the Caspian Sea. And, you know, it could get a bit dangerous in the Caspian Sea. What was his name? Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. He's the kind of man's number you want on speed dial, isn't he? Yeah, If you do a lot right. of travelling. We are, I mean, we... Mark, got a bit of a situation here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a bit of a situation, Mark. You couldn't come and help us out. Um, but we are... Um, Clients, I think, aren't we? TV and Z are clients. And I guess Fonterra as well. Right at the moment, you'll be helping Fonterra people in Chile, I suppose. You never know when that's going to happen.